Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt Napoli. I'm the head of developer strategy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 117 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your 10-minute weekly bite of coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. And the cool thing we're going to talk to you about today is we're bringing API 101 back. Thank you, Matt and Kareem, for having me on your Snack Minute episode. My name is Akila. I'm a software engineer here in Learning and Certification. I know you guys at Cisco U are, are putting out a Exploring HTTP uh, course. Um, and so we thought it would be really cool to, to have you on, Akilah, and, and actually show us, you know, how we actually do it in Python um, and, you know, let the let our snackers get a little refresher if they've been here or for new mm-hmm. snackers. Uh, maybe this will be some new information for them. So why don't you take it away? So a couple of months ago when I was studying for the DevNet Associate exam, um, there were many topics, obviously, on the exam. But there was one topic that really stuck with me, which was REST APIs, because I realized that it was a heavy topic. Um, There's many sections on the DevNet Associate exam that covers REST APIs. It could be either the basics of REST APIs or something Cisco product specific REST APIs. So I thought um, I'll put together a presentation. I'll show you guys the basics of how to build an API request um, so that you guys have an idea of how to do it um, while you're on your journey to study your DevNet Associate. So REST APIs are built um, on top of the HTTP protocol, which means that it's going to use HTTP methods to um, do all its CRUD operations, which is create, read, update, and delete. And HTTP has many, uh, several methods that that REST APIs use, which is over here that you can see it's get, post, put, and delete. So here the application is calling the server. Um, it could use a get, post, put, or delete, whatever you want to do with your request. So if you want to retrieve any information, you could use the get. If you want to post information, you could use the post. Modify information, put, and patch, and delete information, you could use the delete method. So you send a request to the server, the server processes it, and it sends an HTTP response code back. And ideally, we want it to be 200, which means everything went well. So on the bottom, if you see, um, there's the parts of the REST API request. So these are absolutely necessary um, to build your API request. The first thing we have is the method. I just talked about the methods. And we have the URL. This is the resource that the client wants to communicate with the server. So um, for example, for today's example, we will be calling a Cisco WebEx API. We will be getting a list of all the rooms. So in order for that, we need the WebEx Cisco WebEx API URL. And the next thing we need is the headers. We want to be authenticated. So the, the server is not going to return anything if you don't authenticate yourself. So we need the authorization header for sure. And there's other headers such as the content type or the accept, which is basically the data type that your server or the client wants to accept. Um, these, the most common one is JSON, there's HTML, there's XML. And then the parameters are optional. So these are the URL parameter. Basically, if you want to shrink down your request, if you want to sort by something, if you want to add more filters to it, this is where parameters come in place. These are purely optional. Now let's go ahead and actually build a REST API. Let's call the Cisco WebEx API. Let's get a list of all my rooms. Um, So the first thing that we need is we need to import a library called request. You're doing something something cool here. You're actually writing code in your browser. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what that is? Yeah, so this is a Jupyter Notebook. So um, I talked about Jupyter Notebook in my Cisco Live presentation, in the Cisco Youth Theater presentation. Um, so Jupyter Notebook can be used many ways. Basically, if you want to build a small script like this, if you want to test something quick, um, Jupyter Notebook can be used. If you, I also used Jupyter no- Notebook before this when I was demonstrating, when I was using a presentation. I, I don't really use PowerPoints as much. Um, I just go to YouTube <laughs> for a quick demo with live code, I just go to Jupyter Notebook and this just opens up in your local browser. And if you want to know more about it, if you want to know how to install it, how to use it, um, I talked about it in my Cisco U presentation, um, which is in the description below. So the first thing that we need is we're importing the request library. Um, this is what we're going to be using. This is this is needed um, for us to call the API server with the get request, with the post request, patch, whatever that we need. And the next thing that we're going to import is the JSON. So when we call the API, we're going to get a response from the server, right? And we need to see, we need, we need a format. We need a data format to see our results. And I prefer JSON, um, so I'm going to import JSON. So we're going to run it. So 
The next thing that we're going to import is the WebEx API URL. I'm going to get that from my other screen. So this is the URL that I was talking about. We need this URL to access our rooms or my rooms. So we're going to get a list of rooms. And in order for that, we need this URL. And Snackers, if, if this is the first time you're playing with, with the APIs or learning about APIs, what Ankila did here is she went to the WebEx APIs documentation to get to, to, to get that URL. This is not something that you should be expected to know. So just, you know, even on your certification exam, if you're after Dev Associate, we'll be providing you with the proper documentation for you to be able to, to kind of debug or look at these code. Um, the next thing that we need is we need to authenticate ourselves. So there's different kinds of authentication. There's the OAuth authentication. There's the basic authentication. There's token-based authentication. Um, the WebEx, the Cisco WebEx uses token-based authentication. So you can actually go to Cisco WebEx. Um, the description, uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, you would get your token, which is only good for several hours. And then you have to get a new token again if you want to keep testing it for several days. Um, so we're going to get that token and we're going to paste it over here and we're going to run this. So we have our request library, we have our JSON library, we have our URL, we, we're authenticated. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our, we're going to use a dictionary to build our authorization header. So here's the trick. So many people think, uh, or like many people like me assume that um, if we're, if this is an authentication header, the head of the key of the authentication um, header would be authentication, but it's actually not. It's actually authorization. Um, this is where I got confused as well. And be careful on the DevNet Associate exam. Um, this will probably be tested. So this is the variable that I'm saving the, the dictionary to. Um, I have the authorization and you need the bearer in front of it because this is a token-based authentication. Um, and we have the and we're getting the WebEx access token from the line before that, and we run this. And next, we're actually gonna call the API. In order to call the API, we are gonna do response equals request.get. So from the request library, we're getting the dot get method. We're gonna pass the URL argument, which is pulled from the WebEx API URL, and we're gonna pull the headers from the HTTP headers over here, and we're gonna run this. Now let's see if the, res if the request went well, we're gonna print the response code, which is gonna be 200. This is what we expected. Mm -hmm. And we can, and if we wanna look at the actual list of rooms, cause that's our purpose here, we're calling, we're getting a list of WebEx rooms. Um, I'm gonna, this is where JSON comes into place. This is where the JSON library comes into place. And we, if we run this, we have the list of all my WebEx rooms. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, uh touch on something you mentioned earlier, Akila. Um, you mentioned about the authorization and authentication um, confusion. Um, that's a really good point to, to bring out because um, the the authentication piece is identifying that you are you or, or you're, you, you are you. Um, the authorization element to that is what you're allowed to do. And so um, the access token actually covers both of those, but a lot of people get confused around the the um, and and confuse those terms, and so it's good to call out uh, specifically that um, they actually cover could potentially cover both things, but that they are different concepts. Um, the authorization header is is always that that's always the name of that. You will I don't think I've ever seen a header that says auth authenticate or authentication. Um, so, but yes, that yeah. is a confusing point. So, so way to call that out. You know, otherwise, this is pretty straightforward and you did a great job showing us uh, showing us how this all works. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, about the authorization and authentication, I actually got that question wrong on the on the practice exam. Oh, I, no. I got confused when I picked authentication. Akilah, we are getting short on time. Um, so uh, since you are a first time guest, uh, we always ask our first time guests, what superpower would you want to have and why? So I never want my phone's battery to die, or I never want it to go down. <laughs> I would love it. I would love for it to that be one hundred percent. That's always. the best one. That is the best one that we've heard so far. I think that wins. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Um, well, Super battery, like charge, <laughs> being able to charge anything, Super anytime, battery. forever. Yeah, not worry awesome. about putting plugging that in, plugging that thing in at all. Imagine. It would be great. 
Um, snackers, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Akila, for showing us how to make an HTTP call or a REST API call in Python. Um, check out all of the uh, amazing content that's available on Cisco U around this topic if you're new to REST APIs. And even if you're not, it always helps to have a refresher. So uh, thank you for your time, and we'll see you all next week.